Hey, hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Good evening. Good afternoon. I don't know where you are. It's morning for me anyways. Welcome to another episode of the Smooth Dude Yammy Noob. We are doing a ride and review today of the BMW R9T. This is a bit of a maligned motorcycle for me, man. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's my least favorite engine platform, I'll be completely honest. I don't really love Boxer Twins. But this motorcycle, I've seen lots of comments. Uh, I put up a little story post about it on Instagram a while back. Um, I don't know. It elicits a lot of feedback from people. Uh, people seem to really dig this motorcycle. And i got to say, it does look really pretty. You can see here in this kind of camo green color with the 23 right there. This seat is really pretty. Uh, the, the way the engine sticks out, while it is peculiar, um, it is a beautiful shape. And I think this is a very pretty motorcycle. I think it actually hits the mark in a lot of ways. It has a lot of good features for the price. Um, it, it strikes a good blend of like classic and modern, which I always enjoy. And I just think it's a, it's a pretty cool little bike. Um, and I'm willing to try it once again today to see if in this configuration, this very road oriented uh, scrambler style bike, if uh, we can get this thing to to tug on the old yams heartstrings. So before we begin today, I did want to shout out the sponsor of today's video. It is Eurocycle. Now the only reason we can do these cool rad and reviews with these European bikes is because of our good friends over at Eurocycle. Check them out in the link in the description below. They deliver all over the nation. So if you're in the market for a super cool BMW, Triumph, Moto Guzzi, MV Agusta, MV Agusta specifically, they have really, really good pricing on. I've bought a ton of bikes from them. They deliver straight to your door, turnkey service. It's a really, really cool thing they got going on, and they're our preferred dealer partner to work with. So head over to the link down in the description below, check out all of their inventory, and see if one of their motorcycles is right for you. Now let's swing a leg, and let's get started with the ride and review of the BMW R9T. All right. I believe this is a 31.7 inch seat height and small flex, the last person to ride this motorcycle was none other than world superbike rider Garrett Gerloff. Now, funniest thing about this bike before I start it up, because it's a boxer twin, you'll see that when I hit start over here, it's going to slap around. So check this out. <laughs> so it just kind of slaps to one side because the cylinders are horizontally opposed, so whenever you... Whenever you give a little rev like that, it kind of makes it slap around a little bit, and people love that that element of character. Let's get it on the road, shall we? Really nice clutch engagement. Hydraulic clutch, very smooth action. 1170cc boxer twin making 109 horsepower. Really not too bad. Those numbers are not too shabby. And I gotta say, right off the bat, kind of just getting this bike out on the road, you know, it's a BMW product that feels really good to ride. Um, you know, it, the thing about Beamers and me is I do feel like they lack a little bit of je ne sais quoi, a little bit of soul. They kind of do everything a little too buttery smooth for my taste. And uh, the R9T is a little different in that it does actually have quite a bit of, you know, pizzazz and character. Uh, the Boxer Twin is a is a cool thing in this platform specifically. I've ridden the uh, R1250 GS several times in several locations. That bike does nothing for me. <laughs> I find it so soulless, so boring, so Battleship-esque. Uh, really not to my flavor, I gotta say. But the R9T, you know, I think it's it's better executed than the R1250GS, and I know the 1250GS is a great selling motorcycle. It has legions of adoring fans throughout the world, but for me personally, which is why you are watching this review, uh, it doesn't do anything for me, you know? But I think in this configuration, this is cool. I like how this engine as well, it's a little feature I noticed when I was uh, having it parked on the side. This is the air intake, I believe. It's got this little snorkel right here. Uh, just feeds air right into there. That's kind of cool. And then I think it goes down into there into the actual cylinder. That's taking in air and it's expelling the air and doing the whole engine thing. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sitting at a light here. I feel, I mean, it is, it's a cool thing. You know, I feel like I'm on a, a cool, 
you know, scrambler style bike. It's a, it's a very pretty looking bike. Um, one thing I'm noticing in ergonomics perspective, this bike is a little long for my liking. I find from the seat to the bars, a little bit too long. I'd like the bars maybe like five to 10 mil closer to me right here. I find that my arms are quite a bit stretched out. Uh, I'm about 5'11 with a 32 inch inseam. I weigh about 165 pounds without my gear on. So call it 175 with all my gear. And um, yeah, I find that I, I don't fit super comfortably on this thing. It's a little bit long for my liking. Uh, the closest bike I have to compare this to is my Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, uh, which is quite a bit taller. The handlebars are, I think, a little bit wider and a little bit closer. Um, but this is a this is a road-going R9T. Uh, this motorcycle is not designed to, to go off the beaten path, so to speak. Um, doesn't really have that, uh, you know, knobby tires and the whole thing. This is definitely a cafe cruiser kind of bike, you know, and what I mean by that is you go from coffee shop to coffee shop, not the fact that it is a cruiser because, of course, the ergos are very standard. Um, but I will say, you know, the cylinder heads are pretty far away. Uh, you don't really end up touching them or kicking them very much. Uh, I've ridden other BMWs that you do end up kind of touching them and kicking them and not the best feeling, I gotta say. The tank shape, like I said, this is long, man. This is a long tank shape. And sitting here in the cockpit, um, I just find myself a little stretched out on this bike. But it gives a very commanding stance. Uh, I'm noticing that the fork is uh, set at a bit of a, a wider rake than I would have thought. It's a kind of a longer rake, rather. Um, you kind of can see the wheel way out in front of you. Uh, you know, I would have thought that it'd be a little bit more you know, cantilevered forward, a little bit sharper to steer, um, but oof, that was tough. <laughs> that was stiff. But yeah, I find that cranking this thing over, you know, getting it over here, it's got a good amount of mid-range torque. You know, 1170 cc's is, is a good amount. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where the motor feels really good. We'll see here, we'll crack a little bit on the gas. Yeah, it's nice. I don't appear to have a gear position indicator, but maybe I can cycle through the menu here. Uh, the menu is just giving me, wow, what was that engine temperature in like a, in like column bars? My road temperature. Yeah, the engine temp is like in this little column bar situation. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I, to be honest, I, I do like that they've incorporated an analog speedometer um, and uh, this tiny little LCD screen because it gives the bike that that feeling of uh, being a little more retro, a little more authentic. But ultimately, uh, I do wish I had a little bit more information from this uh, from this screen. I find that um, it would have been a little bit better to maybe have gear position, RPM would be nice, but. Yeah, you also don't, re you don't really come to the, uh, you know, BMW R9T to see your gear position indicator and RPM, so I, I can forgive it for that. Uh, one feature I am noticing that's pretty cool is cruise control. Nice, you know? Not everybody comes with that. I was a little disappointed with the Triumph Tiger 660 I recently rode that did not have that, so very nice inclusion. Um, I'm not sure how this bike would do in a, in a long distance touring kind of thing. Any bike can do it. Some bikes just do it a little bit better than others. Um, I think this machine would be fine. Like, I actually really prefer naked bikes when it comes to um, riding around on the street because I find the uh, buffeting of the wind very neutral and it's just what I'm used to most of all. Now, one thing I got to say is I don't, I don't love this transmission. Uh, when you click down in it first, it's still like... It's still slopping the lever around. It doesn't have a difference between, you know, first and neutral feeling. Yeah, I don't don't love the transmission feel. I got to be honest. Not really the best there. But yeah, plenty of power, plenty of poke and brunt. Um, I don't know what this engine redlines at. I think it's probably like eight or nine thousand RPM uh, maximum. I, I don't see it going much higher than that. And you know, it's a it's a nice engine. It's it's a nice engine in that it produces the power it needs to produce. Like 
I feel like I have ample power and torque for a street application, 109 horsepower, and what, probably like 70 something foot pounds of torque. Um, that's really good for street. Uh, is it gonna set your hair on fire? No, not necessarily, but if this is your, maybe your, maybe your second motorcycle, your third motorcycle, and this is kind of your first, like, 1000 cc plus machine like it definitely has enough performance to to keep you entertained let's say uh it definitely keeps you a little bit on your toes a little bit interested you know yeah sitting at the red light here it's just chugging away slapping left and right slightly it's pretty interesting all right we have oh okay there is a dirt mode look at that it says dirt right there uh i'm gonna keep it in rain mode that makes sense to me um, I don't understand. <laughs> Why does this have a dirt mode? <laughs> what are you going to do with this thing off-road? And as you guys know, I recently quit all my off-road riding, so I'm, I'm absolutely not going to go take this thing off-road. It literally makes no sense at all. <laughs> Once this light turns green here, we're going to do a little, a little acceleration test on the old R9T. Another feature I noticed is heated grips. That's quite nice. Nice to see heated grips on the machine. Cruise control heated grips. I mean, touring bike. <laughs> Put a tank bag on it. Go take it wherever you want. Pretty cool. Yeah, not bad. Like I said, the, the Boxer Twin, uh, it feels very vibrational on the hands here on the bars. And it's it's really not the most rewarding engine to, to rev out. And it makes... Uh, Let's say a utilitarian sound. Um, it's a very uninspiring engine note and a very uninspiring engine in general. And that's where I feel like the R9T kind of falls apart for me personally. I just, I don't really care for the boxer engine. And for me, engines in a motorcycle really make the bike, you know? Like how you feel when you get on the gas and the sound that it makes and the performance that it has. Uh, that's really a it's a big deal for me and I just find this machine to be eh, Very like meh. I would really like a 4 out of 10 in terms of excitement or character that I prefer in an engine like I feel like if this thing had uh, I don't know a v-twin or maybe uh yeah, it kind of just feels like a V-Twin is the only thing that would really fit in this. Even like a really spicy parallel twin could be cool. I wouldn't want a triple or a four-cylinder engine in this thing. It wouldn't make sense. But um, yeah, for how it looks, you know, the, the, the engine just leaves quite a bit to be desired here. Uh, it's a little sad for me. So do a little brake test here. Yeah, it's got really nice stopping power. I, I didn't anticipate it doing anything less. Yeah, man, very, very buzzy through the bars and uh, just not really the most inspiring <laughs> engine. I'm sorry, BMW people. I really thought that, you know, this bike's kind of charm and character could overcome the horizontal twin, but it just doesn't do it for me, you know? It really doesn't. It makes so many BMW people angry. All right, jumping on the highway here. Let's go ahead and try out this cruise control. I believe it's turned on now, and then we set. And yeah, there we go. And then you can dial it back with the with the finger here. That's, that's really very, very intuitive, very easy operation. Every cruise control system needs to be like this on motorcycles. I don't understand like why Aprilia, for example, tried to reinvent the wheel with their cruise control. Um, it's really not necessary to to do something super radical or different with cruise control. It should just be a button turns it on and a button sets it, just like it is on a uh, on a car. It doesn't need to be anything different. Cruising on the highway here, as I mentioned, the R9T is very vibrational in the handlebars. Uh, it feels like just, I don't know, a little cheap, I gotta say. And it doesn't feel like something I want to spend a lot of time with, I'll be perfectly honest. Let's go ahead and move on up here a little bit. We'll turn off cruise control. Grabbing sixth gear, doing about 85 miles an hour. It's rock solid stable though. This machine weighs in, I think at like 480 pounds or close to 500, something like that. And so cruising on the highway, it's very rock solid stable. 
and it's the type of bike where if you really wanted to, you could do a lot of distance with it. Uh, I took my Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled with no windshield about 600 miles south to the border in Mexico, past the border actually, into the mountains in Galeana, and I rode it all the way back up. It's about a 1,300 mile trip. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, like <laughs> a proper touring bike would have been better, I guess, but at the same time, you know, it feels really good to take a bike like this and do a big trip. It feels, feels a little more authentic, I suppose, a little more uh, rugged, I guess, like motorcyclist of days past type of thing. So yeah, I think the RNIT here on the highway, it's, it's commendable. It's doing exactly what it needs to do. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's like a highway munching bike or some fantastic highway bike. It's fine. You know, it does the job just fine. So next up, we're going to get the bike in some twistier bits of road. And then we're going to keep riding it and render a final verdict on this thing. Carving up some twistier elements on the... BMW R9T here and what I can say is this motorcycle accomplishes tasks in a very functional way <laughs> it's not very inspiring you know like it's it's doing everything it needs to do you know it's like I was saying earlier but am I having a really great time with this thing eh, not really you know I'm not exactly like loving life on this thing. I'm not really enjoying myself. I feel like it's it's adequately doing its job. The engine kind of gives me that vibe too, where it's like, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna do the thing and we're gonna, you know, go down the road. Also the fact that this has non-adjustable suspension really kind of sucks, you know. This motorcycle makes, you know, a good amount of torque, a good amount of power, and it's quite heavy. Non-adjustable suspension means that this motorcycle uh, the way it's set up is the way it's set up. Unless you pop out the caps and change out the oil and swap out the cartridges and all that shit, uh, you're pretty much stuck with what you're stuck with. And this machine, unfortunately, is, is sprung pretty stiff, you know? It's sprung in such a way that, uh, you know, going over bumps like I did back there, I actually felt it quite a bit in my spine, you know? I wasn't, I wasn't exactly loving life when I was going over some of those bumps with this thing. Uh, it was pretty, pretty stiff, honestly. Um, yeah, I didn't, didn't really enjoy that too much. It, it's much stiffer than I thought it would be. And one of the things I can't help but think about is this is probably like a sixteen, seventeen thousand dollar $17,000 bike. Uh, you know, depending on the options you get, depending on the, the kind of things you do with it. And ultimately, I think if you're spending that kind of money and you want something classic looking but retains, you know, a lot of... Uh, modern amenities and feel and performance I, I really think that the Triumph Bonneville 1200 platform the speed twin uh, man it just obliterates this thing in every category honestly um, I find this machine to just really not do the things it needs to do when it comes to the actual performance you know like I, I just find that this motorcycle um, ultimately Compared to a Triumph Bonneville or something of that ilk, it's just not the same, you know? But it's, I mean, it's still, it's still got two wheels. It's still fun to chuck around. It's still a good time, you know? <laughs> but yeah, Triumph Bonneville 1200, man. Oh my God, I'd have that over this any day of the week. The Speed Twin, what a great bike. Ducati Scrambler, even in the 800 or something like that, also works really well. You know, it's uh, it's a bike that I think, you know, has a little more charm and character from the engine. It, it's a bike that actually provides you quite a bit of feel. Whereas this thing, I don't know, it just ends up feeling a little, a little meh. Looks like I have some doofus following me quite close. And I really wish that he wasn't. So we're gonna go ahead and flip around because I don't really want anybody following me right now while I'm trying to make my video. Yeah, piss off. Really don't like that. So for y'all at home, this is this is not really related to the video. Um, don't randomly group up with people you don't know. Uh, I have no idea who that guy was. He's riding super close to me. 
Guy misses his braking marker or something trying to chase me and he's gonna rear end me. Uh, don't group up with random riders. It's, it's not a cool thing to do. It's not courteous. Uh, don't like it. <laughs> don't do that. If, if you Maybe that was a fan. I don't know. But if you see me on the road, do not group up and ride with me. I don't like it, dude. I don't know who you are. I don't know how you ride. I don't know your experience. Just don't do it. Just stay away from me. Thanks. <laughs> More than happy to meet you guys up in a, you know, a little meet and greet, that sort of thing. But, dude, do not. I don't, I don't know you, man. Don't ride super close to me. Anyways. Yeah, Ducati Scrambler 1200, I feel like, provides way more character. Triumph Bonneville 1200, way more character. Even something like the Kawasaki uh, Z900 RS. Um, really more interesting and more, yeah, more fun than this thing, I gotta say. So folks, let's park the BMW R9 T. Let's, let's try to be a little nicer to it. And uh, we'll wrap up this video, shall we? All right, folks. Wrapping the day up here with the BMW R9T. I gotta say, y'all are you're really not gonna like me for this. <laughs> this is one of my least favorite platforms in bikes, man. Uh, so one of the barometers I use whenever I test a bike and try to ride a bike and all that is I try to see when I get off the thing if I want to jump back on. You know, if I want to get back on the bike. And I gotta be honest. I just don't really feel like doing that with this thing. Um, it's it's not a inspiring experience. Uh, I don't really get the BMW thing. I think for the price you're paying here, Triumph Speed Twin 1200, Ducati Scrambler 1200, Z900 RS. I mean, pick your poison. I mean, <laughs> any one of those bikes I'd rather be on than this thing. So much more interesting of a ride. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really get the BMW thing. I don't get the Boxer Twin thing. And it's funny, I remember there was a forum post one time that we were kind of clowning on a little bit. I think it was on the Yamcast where, or it was a comment, I don't remember. Basically, the gist of it was this this guy who was a BMW simp on some forum was saying like, oh, like, BMW Boxer Twin Lovers are like a unique breed where we're like some sort of, uh, you know, like, oh, we're, we're, we're different. We see the world differently and all that. And I just, I think that's so misguided uh it's just an engine platform and you know if you love it that's great uh i am just putting out the opinion that for me personally this does not do it uh i'm gonna rate this bike like a solid four out of ten uh yeah i don't know doesn't really do much for me not really that interesting but i'll, I'll still keep trying more bmws man maybe there's gonna be a magic bmw that really does it for me so far that s1000 xr was uh, one of the better ones i've tried but yeah, folks, thanks again for watching today's video. If if you hated it, let me know down below in the comments. If you're a BMW apologist, uh, go ahead and type me up uh, a hateful letter. Always love reading those. And big shout-out to the boys over at Eurocycle. Hit them up down in the description below and uh, check them out. They ship all over the nation, and it's a great thing. Thanks for them for supporting today's video. We truly do appreciate it, and thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.